It is good to be here in London. You guys are fantastic. We love being in church here. We love Tim and Nicola, who are your pastors. Can we honour them? We just want to say how much we love them and appreciate them. And can we give it up for the whole team? Because there's a whole lot of people that make church happen here in the Dominion every Sunday. People behind the scenes, people welcoming you when you arrive, people setting up sound systems and doing all kinds of things. There are people right now looking after your kids. And you are really grateful for that, aren't you? So you can just chill for a little bit and be in the service. And there's a whole lot of people that make church happen. We're grateful for all of them. Also love Gary and Kathy Clark. And uh, always great to see these guys. Awesome, awesome people. Well, uh, my message. Also, Anna, I don't know if you know, but Anna, who is leading worship, do you know Anna? Anna's leading worship. Anna is on our global board for Hillsong. I think she's the only worship leader who is on the global board. I think there's other members who would like to lead worship, but they shouldn't. But Anna can do it. I mean, she's amazing and she does other incredible things in her work life and family life and all of that. She's awesome. Our church is just filled with so many really just beautiful, amazing, servant-hearted people. Hey, I love it. Well, my message today is a brand new message, guys. So, you know, this could tank and uh, you might go, what was he talking about? Uh, don't worry, come back next week because someone else will be speaking and it'll probably be really good. But it is called Pillars or Platforms. That's my message, Pillars or Platforms. Now, I have to give credit to a friend of mine. His name is Mark Sayers. He does a podcast called The Rebuilders. Uh, he's an Aussie based in Melbourne and uh, interesting podcast. He's a pastor. He's quite prophetic. And he was talking about this concept of pillars and platforms on his podcast. And I texted him to say, I'm going to steal it. And he said, that's okay. So we're all friends here, all right? Pillars and platforms. And I've been thinking about this and thinking about it quite a lot because we live in a world today uh, that in many ways is all about platforms, isn't it? You have a digital world that creates a digital platform. And, uh, you know, these days you can be a TikToker. I mean, who knew what a TikToker was probably even three years ago? If I said TikTok, you would have thought I was talking about a clock. Now I'm talking about a digital platform. So you can be a TikToker, you can be a YouTuber, uh, you can obviously be on the gram, Instagram, you can be on Twitter or X, whatever it is. You can be on all of these places and you can have a platform. And uh, more and more, it's becoming easier and easier to have a platform, isn't it? Doesn't necessarily mean that that platform uh, is producing anything of real value, but you can have a platform. That's the world we live in. More and more, anyone can say anything to anyone via social media. You don't even have to give your real name. You can just say stuff about people and they don't even know who you are. How bad is that? Anyway. We can live like that. So there are platforms uh, that seem to be a way of, 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 of living. And then uh, there's another thing which we're going to talk about called a pillar. Platforms and pillars. We're in the area, we're in the area, <laughs> we're in the era of the influencer. Who would have thought? I mean, influencers. Maybe you're an influencer. Fantastic. More power to you. You get paid to go on holidays and tell everyone else about, who wants that job? I want that job. You know, somehow you get paid to eat stuff. Mmm, tastes great. You get paid to wear stuff. You get paid to go places. I mean, well, who knew that this was a career option? It was never a career option when I was growing up, when I was at school, when I sat down with a career advisor. Do they still have career advisors? I don't know, but I had a career advisor 
And uh, yeah, and, and so I went and did civil engineering for my, um, if you're a civil engineer, that's fantastic, but I went and did it in grade 10 as work experience, most boring week of my life. Anyway, moved on from that. But now we're in the area of the influencer, isn't it? You can be an influencer. You can earn money by just posting about things you've done and places you've been without actually really, I suppose, having any level. I mean, you don't need a degree to do that. You don't need any real study to do that. You just need to look good and you get paid to do that. So in this world of platforms that everyone seems to be going after or seems to be maybe the push to go after culturally that we should uh, be pursuing these platforms, what does that mean for followers of Jesus? What does that mean for Christians, for people of faith? Uh, in a world of platforms, what is it that we should be Pursuing, You see, uh, I just want to say that all platforms aren't bad. I'm actually on a platform right now, speaking to you guys. Hopefully, something of what I say is going to be helpful to you uh, and that I use this platform well. But why don't we start by having a look at what the Bible says about living life well. And Psalm 1 Psalm, P.S. Psalm, not someone, although someone wrote Psalm 1. You can tell this is the first time I've preached this year. Psalm 1 <laughs> talks about a life well lived. Talks about a blessed life. And in Psalm 1 verse 3, it gives a picture of what a life well lived, a life following after God could look like. And verse 3, it says, these people, those who follow after God, are like trees planted along the riverbank, bearing fruit each season, their leaves never wither, and they prosper in all they do. Psalm 1 describes a tree, a beautiful tree. We might have an image come up on the screen of a beautiful tree. I love trees. I don't know about you. I love them. I could walk around the parks in London and just look at some of the beautiful trees that have been there for years. Is there anyone else like that? I just think trees are amazing. And, uh, and, and here's some beautiful trees which over many, many years have grown up through different seasons. And there they are looking quite majestic. A tree, what did I do with my? A tree reminds me more of a pillar, something strong and enduring, than it does a platform. I suppose you could cut down a tree to create a platform. But when I read about someone and I consider this kind of image of what a life following God blessed look like, it's this strong tree that endures seasons, that is beautiful to look at, maybe a little gnarled from the years and time, but still has a rich beauty about it, produces fruit in its season, and is a blessing to the world around it. The image of a tree, strong, secure, and steadfast. See, I believe God is looking for those of us who are committed to becoming pillars in a world that's chasing after platforms. Now, they are connected. In fact, I believe this, if you develop a strong pillar in your life, there will be opportunity that will come for you to have a platform. But if you get it the other way around where you're chasing after the platform without dealing with the pillar stuff, this stuff doesn't usually last. See, pillars hold things up. There are pillars holding this building up. Pillars are there for others. They serve others. Platforms hold you up. Platforms are about you. Pillars tend to be about others. Platforms tend to be about you. Now, as I said, there's no doubt you can use your platform to have a positive impact. 
You can use your platform to, to speak life to others, to utilize it for the benefit of others, absolutely. But what I'm learning is that what Jesus asks of us and the example of Jesus is that He lived far more as a pillar and encouraging His followers to be pillars more than He did about chasing after a platform. In fact, His first miracle is really interesting. It's one where He turns water into wine, He's at a, a wedding. It's all going well to they, until they run out of the wine. And you do not want this to happen at the wedding. Uh, it looks really bad. It's, it's embarrassing. It's shameful for the bride and groom and their family. There is nothing more because wine is all about celebrating. And it makes them look like, you know, they've failed miserably and they haven't been able to provide for those who are at the party. We read in John chapter 2, verse 1, about this wedding. This is the first miracle Jesus ever did. So let's just have a read of this together. The next day, there was a wedding celebration in the village of Cana in Galilee. Jesus' mother was there, and Jesus and his disciples were also invited to the celebration. So it's obviously someone close to the family. The wine supply ran out during the festivities, so Jesus' mother told him, they have no more wine. Dear woman, that's not our problem. Can I just say to young men here, do not speak to your mother the way Jesus addressed in this instance his. He's Jesus. For whatever reason, he can get away with it. But don't try it because you're not the son of God. You're just a naughty boy. Anyway, so Jesus says, dear woman, that's not our problem. Jesus replied, my time has not yet come. So Jesus is going, look, mother, I, I'm not ready. This is not platform time is not yet. Okay, we're still working this thing out. But his mother told the servants, Mary was obviously pretty persistent. She wanted to look after whoever's party it was and she knew Jesus was the key to that. And she just says to the servants, listen, just go over and do whatever he says. Standing nearby were six stone water jars used for Jewish ceremonial washing. Each could hold 20 to 30 gallons. Jesus, it doesn't even seem like Jesus gets up from where he is. Like he doesn't use the platform. He doesn't go, okay, guys, gather around. We've got no more wine. But I'm about to show you how it's done, all right? JC in the house. He didn't do any of that. It appears that he just stays where it is. The servants come around and said, your mum told us to do whatever you say. What do you want us to do? Jesus just says, fill the jars with water. And when the jars had been filled with water, he said, now dip some out and take it to the master of ceremonies. So the servants followed his instructions. He's crazy. Fill it with water. Okay, let's fill it with water. When the master of the ceremonies tasted the water that was now wine, not knowing where it had come from, though of course the servants knew they didn't know it was from Jesus. He's not using a platform. He called the bridegroom over and says, a host always serves the best wine first, he said. Then when everyone has had a lot to drink, he brings out the, least, the less expensive wine, but you've kept the best until now. And on it goes that Jesus looks after these people at their party and saves them from experiencing shame. He doesn't do it from a platform. He does it as a pillar to serve those who need it and probably also because his mum was on his case. Jesus didn't do this to prove something. He does it for others and he does it in obedience. He was being a pillar to serve others. What's interesting to me is if you follow the life of Jesus on this earth through the Gospels, which is the books of Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, you will find these different historical accounts of how Jesus lived. And most of Jesus' arguments and battles were with one group of people. If you have been in church for any length of time, you should know what I'm talking about. They were called the F, but P, H, 
Pharisees, that's right. I knew you guys were going to get it. Very intelligent crowd. Take after your pastors, Tim. Grade nine, best three years of your life, wasn't it, Tim? That was a joke. No one heard that. Just straight over. Anyway, Jesus' biggest battles were with the Pharisees. The, the Pharisees were the religious leaders of the day. Who were they? They were people with a platform. And Jesus kept battling them. Why did he battle them? Why did he have arguments with them? Why did he challenge them so often? Because he knew that they were not using their platform for others, but for themselves. Now, it wasn't bad that they had a platform. It was how they were using the platform. And they were using it to oppress others, to look after themselves, and to benefit and enrich themselves from the platform they had. They loved the platform because it gave them a voice, but they didn't use it to benefit others. And Jesus was constantly battling them and at the same time teaching his followers, his disciples, that they were called to grow into pillars before they went after platforms. We read about this in Matthew 20, 25, when uh, the disciples wanted to talk about who's the greatest and they're arguing over this and, you know, they're having their own uh, challenges, just like everybody does, uh, you know, about I deserve this and I'm better than this person. And, you know, I, I know you guys don't battle like that, but actually there's a few of us who do struggle with our own insecurities. And these guys are dealing with that. And in Matthew 20, 25, it says, but Jesus called them together and said, you know, the rulers of this world, Lord, it over the people. Officials flaunt their authority over those under them. Platforms. But among you, it will be different. Whoever wants to be a leader among you must be your servant. And whoever wants to be first among you must be your slave. For even the Son of Man came not to be served, but to serve others and to give his life as a ransom for many. Jesus is teaching his disciples, we are here to serve others. We are here to be pillars before we get on some platform and start speaking to everybody about what we know. And Jesus kept hammering this. He kept challenging this. He kept uh, talking through this whole concept of forget about the platform and worry more about the pillar of what you're becoming. In Matthew 7, 24, he tells a story, and you may have heard it before, about the homes, two of them that look beautiful, but one's built on the rock and one's built on the sand. And there is no difference to either of them until the storm comes. Jesus said, therefore, everyone who hears these words of mine and puts them into practice is like a wise man who built his house on the rock. The rain came, the steams rose, the winds blew and beat against that house, yet it did not fall because it had its foundation on the rock. It was built on a strong pillar. But everyone who hears these words of mine and does not put them into practice is like a foolish man who built his house on sand. The rain came, the steams, streams rose, the winds blew and beat against the house and it fell with a great crash. Pillars or platforms. You can have a platform. It can look really good for a season. But a pillar is gonna handle the storms of life. Pillar's gonna have the capacity to handle the tough seasons, the difficult seasons, and stay strong because a pillar is building strength, whereas on a platform, you're relying on strength. So my question to all of us is simply this today, guys. Will you be a pillar for God in your community and in your church? Will you be a, will you be a pillar for God in your family? Will you be a pillar for God in the world that you live in? Or are you looking for a platform so everyone can hear your voice? See, if you and I just make a choice to be strong pillars, guess what? Over time, our voice, the voice of Jesus and His church will get louder and will get clearer. But if we chase the platform and don't think about dealing with being strong pillars, then guess what? The platform has no substance. So let's be pillars. See, here's a few thoughts 
I'm losing my voice. It's the first time I preached. I don't have a preaching voice anymore. Number one, pillars are comfortable with silence. Platforms must have something to say. Pillars are comfortable with silence. Jesus in Matthew 27, 25 is brought before the, the priests and the elders. But when the leading priests and the elders made their accusations against him, Jesus remained silent. He's got a platform. He can tell them everything. Verse 13, didn't you hear all these charges they're bringing against you? Pilate demanded, come on, Jesus, speak up. Have your say. This is your opportunity. This is your platform. But Jesus made no response to any of the charges, much to the governor's surprise. Sometimes you don't have to say anything. You just keep living strong for what you know is the way God has called you to live. Number two, Pillars have built their own strength. I already mentioned this. Platforms rely on the strength of others. Pillars are building strength. That's what a tree is. It's building strength over time. Starts off as a little sapling. Over time, just gets stronger. Over seasons, gets more able to handle whatever it is it's facing. Pillars have built their own strength. When you're on a platform, I'm relying on the strength of others. Uh, number three, pillars last the test of time and endure seasons. Platforms come and go. You can have a platform for a season and then that platform goes. How many have, have, of you have ever watched Pop Idol? Do you still have Pop Idol? No. But you remember it, don't you? And do you remember all the different winners of Pop Idol? No. But at the time, they had a platform and they are unbelievable. And we thought they were the greatest thing. And isn't this amazing? And then we have the voice. And, and then we have the chair that spins around. And then you have people now who dress up as, I don't know, animals and sing or something. Have you seen that one? And who's behind the mask? I mean, it's weird. We just go more and more into these things. What is it? Everyone's wanting a platform and that's fine. And some people get a great break from that platform. But let me tell you, you'll only endure when you have the strength that a pillar has. Pillars are built over time and will create platforms of credibility and wisdom. So you will get a platform but it's from building life as a pillar over time. Number five, pillars are more committed to what they're becoming. Platforms are focused on what they're saying. And Jesus was constantly challenging his disciples around who they were becoming, about what was going on inside of them about a response of love and a response of grace and a response of forgiveness when everything in you wants to be the opposite and maybe shout from your platform how bad this person is and how much they've wronged you. And I get it. We can have some bad experiences happen to all of us. But at some point you can shout it, but you've still got to deal with it. And that's where God works in our hearts. That's why Jesus didn't come to change you behaviorally. He came to deal with the issues in your heart, all right? And he works from the inside out. The challenge of us humans is we try to deal with everything from the outside rather than looking inwardly at what is going on in our hearts. And that's where Jesus came to deal with us. And from there, things start to change outwardly. I want to conclude um, by putting up on the screen the image of a gentleman in our church who recently passed away. His name is Serge, Pastor Serge Gregoric, and that's Serge there. Serge uh, passed away about a week or so ago. 81 years of age. He was a pastor in our church in the Hills campus in Sydney for over 30 years. Serge never really had a big platform. Serge never 
got up and preached at a Hillsong conference. Most of you have probably never heard of Serge. But Serge was on the doors greeting people every Sunday, giving people a warm handshake or a hug, smiling, saying hi to everybody he could, didn't matter who they were, showing no judgment, just showing love. Serge was the guy who went to the hospitals when people were sick or their kids were sick or he was with someone when someone they loved passed away. Serge was the guy who showed up when others didn't. Not standing on a big platform, but committing his life to be a pillar when it was needed the most. When people needed strength, when people needed grace, when people needed love, Serge was there. And his funeral memorial service was yesterday in Sydney at the Hills campus. And we had to use the convention center that seats 4,000 people to fit the crowd who came to Serge's memorial service. A guy who never really had much of a platform, but who lived as a pillar in the kingdom of God. And because of that, amen. Yeah, we wanna honor the life of Serge. And because of that, people came because they said, you're the real deal. You're what this is all about is following Jesus thing. It's not about what platform you get. It's about choosing to live as a pillar in order to serve others. And Serge, Pastor Serge Gregoric, exemplified that. If the worship team can join me. In a world that is all about pursuing platforms, can we be content to be a pillar? Strong, bringing strength and hope, security and wisdom to those around us, being a pillar in our church, our local church, being a pillar in our local community, getting involved, being a pillar in our families. It's a sad reality is often the more we chase after platforms, the more we can neglect the pillars that really matter. And I'm not against using platforms, but I just wanted to remind us that Jesus had a whole lot of opportunities to get up on a platform. And many times what he did was the opposite because he's trying to teach his followers that it's about becoming a pillar. Someone that as you follow after Jesus, you slowly get stronger in your faith. You, str- you slowly grow in your ability to love, to show grace, to show forgiveness, to show kindness. You understand your life is all about serving the lives of others. And you do that to the glory of God and to the very best of your ability. And every now and then, when you and I live like that, God gives us a platform to stand on. And when he does it, let's use it to bring glory to him. Let's use it to continue to serve others. Let's use it because we understand what it has taken to get up onto the platform because of what it cost us to get there because we chose to live as pillars in the house of God. Can we stand together? Let's pray. Anna, you can come and lead us. My Rod Stewart voice is not gonna help you lead worship today. Father God, we just thank you 
We thank you that we just have this beautiful opportunity to serve as pillars in your house and in our communities and in our families. To simply bring glory to your name in who we are and not just in what we do. Lord, I pray that we'd have a greater resolve to be those kind of pillars, those beautiful trees that grow up and are strong, bring life, bring fruit, living as pillars, Lord God, to your glory. Lord, I pray you'd help people here who are struggling in different ways to know how much they're loved by you. Lord, just they're struggling to feel accepted. May they know again that, that your grace is more than enough, that you love us and you invite us into this beautiful relationship with you. It's not based on anything of who we are, but it's, it's all based on who you are as a beautiful heavenly Father who loves us, your children. And so I just ask, Holy Spirit of God, that you would work in the hearts and lives of people today, that we would choose to follow after you, Jesus, and you take us on this adventure as pillars in your house, strong, courageous, confident, producing fruit that lasts. You know, and we, in your name we pray, Jesus. Let's worship Him for a moment.